Hey there guys, welcome to what is part three in our little series here, tutorial series here on Conva.js. Now in part one, we introduced the Conva library. In part two, we went over a bunch of the different shapes you can draw in Conva. And in this part three, we're going to talk about two things, event listeners and editing shapes after they've been added to, uh, to the stage or to the layer to be specific. And these are both very, very easy. So this should be a very, very quick video. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, here's our JavaScript. We're creating a stage as usual, passing in height, width, and the container of the element it's to be held in. A layer, a single layer. I forget if I mentioned this in the previous videos, but you don't need to add any parameters, any object, or anything else when you create a layer, okay? It's just as you see here. And of course, we're adding that to the stage. Usually, add from the parent, we're saying stage.addLayer like this. And finally, just a single shape here, a star with the properties you can see. And of course, we're adding that star to the layer using the syntax you see. So now, let's say that you want to make the star respond to some event, perhaps a click event. Here's the syntax. So as you can see, we simply say star in this case, and then on click and then some function here. I happen to be using an ES6 fat arrow function. You could use a standard function keyword function or a function name if you like, that'd be perfectly fine too. And in this case, we're just logging something silly out to the console. If we've done this correctly, saving and refreshing, come in here, click on the star and lo and behold, it works. Okay, so that's great, wonderful. How do we remove that event? Very easily. In this case, we would simply say star dot off click. And now if we've done this correctly, come in here, it should fire off once. Okay, Ooh, there we go, fired off. Okay, click it again as many times as we like and that event listener has been removed. It's just that simple, my friends. Now here we're using a click listener, but other events include, for example, DBL click for double click. There's mouse enter for when your mouse first goes over uh, the shape, a mouse leave when it leaves the shape, and so forth and so on. There are drag events, drag end, drag stop, drag stop, drag end, you know what I'm forgetting. Uh, a drag move, which fires off continuously during the drag event, and so forth and so on. I'm going to let you go to the documentation for the details here, but there are a lot, basically all of the user events uh, that you could imagine that you can use in vanilla JavaScript are available to you here using the syntax which we've seen. And that's it. Couldn't be simpler. So next, let's talk about editing shapes, changing the shape after we've added it uh, to our project, okay? Now, traditionally, uh, when you create a shape, you're going to set a whole lot of properties such as the X and Y. These are not mandatory, but you can set them, the fill color in this case, and in the case of a star, outer radius, and inner, and all that, blah, blah, blah. But we can change these anytime we like with the following syntax. Let's say that when we click on our star, we don't want to log something out. We want to change its fill color. Now, when we click on the star, it should change uh, its fill color to light blue, and it does indeed. Couldn't be simpler. Take a look at this syntax, my friends. This fill method here, okay, is indeed a method and not a property. So it's a it's a, a function basically in to which we pass in the color to which we want to change the, the, the new value, basically, of the fill property here. So when we create, this is just a little bit confusing, so, so, so pay attention here. When we create the new star, we're setting fill as if it were a property, but when we change or edit it, edit that property, the fill property in this case, we use the fill method, okay, like this. What you don't want to do is this. Okay, somehow it seems that to me at least, maybe I'm just weird, but it seems like you might be able to set the star's fill property to light blue like this. This is what we do not do. This will not work. It is a method and it takes this parameter. Okay, great. And not to beat you over the head with this, but you can do this with the X and the Y and the draggable. And in this case, because it's a star, the inner outer radius, any property that you can define in the constructor, you can also change later on. Okay, that's it, my friends. Now, this begs the question then perhaps, Great, so now we know how to change a property, right? How do you get the property? Suppose we click on the star and we want to find out what color it is. We want to get that yellow, okay? How do we do that? Watch this. 
That's right, it couldn't be easier. In this case, we're logging out the stars fill property here, and we're using exactly the same fill method we saw a moment ago, right? Except this time we're passing in no parameters. These parentheses are empty. When you pass in no parameters in this case, it doesn't change anything. It certainly doesn't set the fill color to null, for example. It returns to you the current value. If you do pass in a value like light blue or red or green or yellow, whatever it is, well, not yellow in this case, it already was yellow, but if you pass in a property, uh, or a value rather, it sets it to that value. When you don't pass in any parameters at all, it doesn't change anything, it just returns the new value to you. So that's it, couldn't be easier. And my friends, while we're here, let me just mention something else. Suppose hypothetically that you wanna get the width of the, the stage itself, the width of the project or the page itself in pixels. Now up here, let's scroll up here, we're setting the height and the width to window inner height and window inner width, but we don't know how many pixels that is. Maybe we wanna, you know, we want that information for some reason. We can use the following syntax. The stage width uh, method here, okay, returns to us the width in pixels. So if we click on the star here, we should get some number, I'm guessing 500 something. Oh, it's 500 exactly, all right, great. And that is how you retrieve the value of the stage. I mention this because the stage basically exists in order to add layers to it. The only time you ever really use the stage is to say stage.add and then some layer, okay? But another use case for the stage is when you wanna get the height or the width programmatically in pixels, and that's what we do here. And that, my friends, that is basically it. But let's, before we finish here, let's, let's use what we have learned here, and let's say that when we click on the star, we wanna to toggle the color between yellow and blue, okay? How would we do that? Okay. If you'd like to, pause the video and see if you can figure this out for yourself. And now let's get into it. Okay, if we want to toggle the color, let's do this. Let's, I propose we can do this. If the star's current fill color strictly equals yellow, in that case, if it is, if it is yellow, okay, then we want to say star.fill light blue. In the event that it is not yellow, we use an else block here and we'll say star.fill yellow. All right, couldn't be simpler. Now when we come in, click on the star, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, but it works just beautifully, doesn't it? Okay, could not be simpler. One final thing, this is has less to do with Conva than just programming in general. This code is long and ugly as hell. In fact, you should avoid, this is a different topic, but you should avoid using else at all, okay? Else is evil, okay? let's recreate these one, two, three, four, five lines of code in a single line of code. Okay, now my friends, if we've done this right, the same thing happens. We're still toggling the color, great. Okay, what's happening here? Well, here we're saying star dot fill and inside these parentheses here, these rather full parentheses, here you go, we are passing in a parameter and that parameter seems to be a ternary expression, we're saying star.fill, so here we're getting the, the current fill color, and if that fill color strictly equals yellow, yes, 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 here's the question mark in our ternary expression. If it's yellow, if the current fill color is yellow, then we're gonna set it to light blue, else if it's not yellow, then we set it to yellow, okay? And that is exactly why this works, doesn't it? I think it works, hold on, it did, right? Here we are, recheck it, okay, great. And that, my friends, is really all there is to say about uh, event listeners and editing shapes in Canva. So thank you very much for watching. I invite you to join me for part four in which we'll finally talk about animations. Okay, see you then.